And we are live. Hey, family. Good evening. Good night. Good morning. <laughs> Wherever you're watching us from, we are coming to you live. Well, I'm coming to you live. Yes, from Kingston, Jamaica. See, yes, my signal just went off, right? Because I'm subscribed to JMB Jamaica on YouTube. And how it goes is that if I hit the notification bell every time we go live, YouTube sends that signal to your phone. So if you don't want to miss a future episode of Goal Get Alive, you know what to do, right? Just go to YouTube, look for JMB Group Jamaica's channel, hit the subscribe button, hit the notification bell, and you will get the notice every time we go live. And guys, did I tell you that tonight's episode is going to be spicy? Oh, my goodness. Oh, my goodness. What are we going to get into that? But, guys, you know how we like to do it, right? Drop a comment wherever you're watching us from, whether you're coming from Facebook or YouTube or Twitter, wherever. Just drop a comment. Give us your name. Tell us where you're watching us from. You would like to have a near little interaction going. We know we have a Jamaican audience as always. All big up all the yardies, them. <laughs> all the Jamaicans in the island of Jamaica. And of course, we have folks coming to us from the diaspora. And we have some international people. We normally have some Trinis in the house. I love Trinidad. Love my Trinidad and Tobago people. That usually join us and we have folks from the uk europe asia us canada drop a comment tell us where you're watching us from see them coming in here already love it first out the gate orville what's up what's up what's up orville and shanique i'm doing great how are you love we have some regular people but we always have new new people because every week Word gets around that we have this awesome conversation. Yeah, right in the middle of Jamaican curfew. We got nowhere to go. I think curfew is now 9 o'clock. So you're probably catching the last of it before we're going to nightly curfew. But we're still holding it down. Hey, Andrew. Hey, Christine. That's my mommy's name. Chevelle, welcome. And Kay, brilliant. Hello, brilliant. Welcome back. Clara, Clara. Another Christine. Wait, wonderful people, man. Two Christines in the chat. Michael. Hey, Michael from Kingston. Lucas said, welcome back. Paulette. Man, Richardo, my friend. What's happening? And Christopher, the male version to Christine or something like that. No, so wonderful, wonderful. Glad to hear your good Shanique Tashoya. Yes, guys, drop a comment. Welcome. Another carry on from Portmore and it's spelled the right way. So that means you're an awesome person, right? Hey, Karen. Good night. Yes, guys. So here is it. You know how we're going to drop it tonight. Woo! We have some good information. We're talking about the top five stocks. And we may even give you a little more than five, but we have to stick around to find that out, right? So you know how we like to do it. It's JMMB style. It's your life. We host it, but it's your live. So we're going to have a nice conversation with one of, more, one of our awesome guests. I'm going to introduce him in a minute. He's going to tell you who he, who he is and what he does at JMMB. And we're just going to do our usual level setting questions because, you know, not everybody is at the same point on the learning curve with the stocks thing. And that's perfectly okay. That is why JMMB is here. We're here for everybody who need to get into the stocks thing and want to understand it to see if it's something for them before they speak to their financial advisor about it further and then he's gonna give us the nuggets and then drop his picks okay so it's going to be an awesome awesome conversation and i love it hey gus from new york love it love, you see international we're gone you know winsome veronica charia love it love it hey juliet nadia Dorothy, Karen, oh my goodness, yes guys So keep dropping them and get your questions ready Because once we do the level setting Then we start to get into the stock picks now We're going to take your questions, right? We want to make sure that everybody's on the curve And everybody knows what's going on And we are going to have an awesome conversation Yes, Katie, me ready, we ready Let's bring up Clive, let's bring up Mr. Clive. I call him Uncle Clivey, right? No, I just, you know, every every time I do these lives and I do it with my JMB colleagues, I'm like, you know, this COVID thing is a wicked brew because how long I don't see these people in person. You know, normally we buck up in the parking lot, your Uncle Clive, when me and you lock the JMB door at night time, we usually buck up in the parking lot and have yep. a little chit chat. 
mm-hmm. right? Because Clive is from a parish that is near to my heart. You're from, tell me you're from St. Elizabeth. Am I, is my memory good? Near, near enough, yes. Manchester. That's near enough. Okay, parish okay. Near I don't know. Why part. did I think St. Elizabeth? <laughs> you went to school? You went to school in St. Elizabeth? You know, interesting. I was born there, you know. Okay, near, that's near weird. Most of my life in Kingston. Oh, really? Very, 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 very country in Manchester. Yeah, man. Okay, because I said, you know, I knew there was a St. Elizabeth in some conversation we had, and that stuck with me okay. because my dad grew up in St. Elizabeth. He spent oh. most of his childhood there. My grandparents were there. Oh. And, you know, I guess I kind of have a little connection. I mean, I went to UA, and the boyfriend I had right throughout campus was around St. Elizabeth. So it's like I always feel like St. Elizabeth always yeah. comes present to mind for me. Real country girl, eh? Even you understand? St. Elizabeth. <laughs> yeah, you know, because, you know, they, they got it down right there. Right. So so I know my memory wasn't going too off. But hey, mm. Manchester, we love Manchester peeps as well. Awesome. My best friend is from Manchester, so love mm. that. So, Clive, start out. Could you tell us what you do at JMMB? And because I don't like to give people title and all them things. You know, JMMB, we make the title them too sexy sometimes, and I don't always mm. remember. Mm. So could you start out by sharing that with us, Clive? Okay, simply put, equity trader, right? Um, of course, you know, in JMB, it's very expansive, you know. Uh, assist with a portfolio that is prop proprietary portfolio, that's JMB's own portfolio across the region, Jamaica, Trinidad, Barbados to some extent, and wherever we go. Um, of course, and you support the 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 the, the investment advisors uh, with analysis, with what is technical information, what is happening in the marketplace, and with other things you know so yes call me a trader primarily that's what it is Uh all right and equity is another word for stock right god not everybody know that you know you can say wealth i I like to say wealth rather than money yeah right true true Um, but not a lot of people knows what when you say equity trader you mean stock basically stock trader if we speak speaking if we're speaking another kind of english is stock trader you know because not everybody knows that the words are synonyms synonyms right so welcome clivey i see you are at work still so you see if (laughs) if i was at work see we would be locking up jim and b gate and you already uh uh-huh me you and mr taylor (laughs) <laughs> yes, uh, Mr. Taylor closed down the closed down the, the door at um, night when we're working late. But you know, it it is it is what it is. Hey David, David Rose said Clive is the general. All right. See so you have your fan you club go. here. <laughs> and Ashley is saying hi, nice to see you again, Clive Marie from Fact saying Clive is a real gentleman. I agree. I agree. Uh. Thank Absolutely, you. yeah, man. So, no, man, Clive is the real deal. I mean, I'm not going, we're not going to get into marital status or anything. We don't want to get myself in our <laughs> Clive in any trouble. Do not slide into the DMs, people. We are not taking DMs for Clive. We're having a talk conversation only tonight. All right, so Clive, we are ready, like Freddie. Okay, we are ready because we got the questions down. We shared the questions with you ahead of time, as we normally do. It's your first time on JMB Goal Get Alive. Yes. So yes. welcome, welcome to this to this yes. awesome platform and to the family watching. Everybody welcoming you. Wonderful. Yes. So Clive, Wonderful. let us start out. So we know we, we so we know what a stock is, right? We we we, we explain the synonym stock and equities. Mm. No. Recently, certainly over the last year and change, we were talking about what seemed to have been more along the lines of a bear occurrence happening in the market, right? Mm -hmm. Um, It started a little bit before COVID, admittedly. A lot of people thought COVID had caused it, but I think it started a little bit before COVID is what prior conversations would have said. Mm -hmm. Um, And then there seems to be a thinking now that there has been a little bit, just a little bit of an uptick in recent times in the market. Is that so? And I mean, if so, do you see, what do you see as the trajectory there where that is concerned? Okay. Well, I'm the perennial optimist, you know. I'm of sorry, course. Clive. I don't know. Did you did you is your camera off by any chance? I don't know. I'm I'm not seeing your oh. face. So I don't oh. know if your camera is closed off or not. No, um, it should be on. Okay. I Let me see. I don't know. Uh, hold and on. You didn't mute mute the 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 stop cam and no, then 
So mm-hmm. the stop cam is on, oh, and then the, the latch on your on your laptop is is open. That's weird. It just went totally yeah. off like that. I don't hmm. see my face, and then suddenly I can't see. see. Yeah, that's um, weird. I don't know. Right, let, let's, I Sorry, guys. You know the technical difficulties go right. Yeah. We don't have no <laughs> no misgivings. I wonder if you want to come uh-huh. out of the studio and go back in. Okay. How about that? Let me you know, do that then. Yeah, you could maybe exit the browser and then you click up back on the link to re-enter the studio right. like how you right. did, and hopefully okay. that will work. All right, all all right. right. let me do that right away. All right. Thank you, you so much, to... Clivey. Yeah, man. Yes. So, yes. guys, I mean, you know, we're not making, we're not, you know, the technology thing go last week. I think we had some Wi-Fi issues. Every, you know, it, it is what it is, but we're still here. Yeah, we still got a little technical difficulties. But thanks so much, guys. Um, yes, Katie, we're going to still get through it somehow. You know, information is gonna be passed, right? Um, or we'll drop in, in a question very early. Yes, guys, get your questions ready. We're going to keep the questions and, and, and have them stacked up and ready to start answering once it's that time of the broadcast, right? So get your questions ready. And what we're really going to be doing here tonight, guys, is we're going to be talking about what's happening in the market right now. What do we, based on what we know, could happen in the very near future? Again, a market is very dynamic. We don't have a crystal ball to know exactly how things will pan out. But we use our expertise and what we see happening based on past experience as well, what perhaps could become a reality. And then now, based again on what's happening, we are kind of going to say, you know, these are the stocks that we think you could watch, right? want to be very clear, though, guys. Again, we don't got no crystal ball. So not because we say it's a stock that you could pick or it's a top stock to watch, right? Be very careful. We're not saying just go out and buy tomorrow. Still discuss it with your licensed financial advisor, people, because what is a good stock to have in my portfolio is not necessarily a must-have stock to have in your portfolio, right? Let's just keep it real. We have different levels of risk tolerance, okay? What I can stomach, you may not be able to stomach or vice versa. How long I want to invest for? Hey, I could have a very long time horizon because I have small children and I'm investing in stocks to pay for their college. I have 15 years to go. You may have an older child and, you know, you only have eight years before they go to university. And guess what? Who, what kind of stocks you put in your portfolio to be able to achieve that goal could be very, very different. So the goal is, guys, remember, think about how much time you have to invest how much risk you want to take on. And you also want to make sure to have that conversation with a licensed professional in as much as JMV makes it easy for you to do your stock purchases on your own. Remember at the end of the day, it's still good to seek proper advice to help you to navigate if it is you are not a professional in this thing yourself. We don't want anybody to be caught with their pants down. So... Um, yeah, so we're just gonna, um, Clive, we should be coming back shortly. I hope everything is okay. You know, you're backstage from 7.30 and everything is working fine. And then like 10 minutes into the episode, <laughs> the place change up. All right. So um, I don't know if our admin could just give us a quick update on how, if, if they see any sign of Clive coming back in. Yes, Dre, it is very very important to have that discussion yes kc time to make some money absolutely orville we're building wealth yes katie we should call his cell right <laughs> at least we know he's at jmb so you should be okay <laughs> you should be okay um getting the questions coming in andrew asking about you know um graduate portfolio because that's another way to invest in stocks guys because that's a part of the conversation we are going to touch on as well is that if you don't really want to purchase your own stocks which is of course absolutely fine um you want to invest in what we call a managed portfolio where you just place your money in a portfolio that jmb takes puts in a portfolio and our experts manage that process on the back end we will the portfolio is comprised of many different types of stocks and then of course depending on how much risk you want to take on the stocks will vary the stocks that make up the portfolio will will vary but the experts what they kind of do is buy back and forth they know when to buy know when to sell and then 
um, you really don't have to worry about it too much because it's being taken care of for you. There are some people who prefer that option as opposed to, you know, watching the stock market, seeing, okay, when should I buy? When is a good time to sell, etc. cetera. Um, so that's also an option. And JMB Wealth Builder, JMB Graduate are two of the options that you can use to do that. JMB Graduate is a portfolio specifically designed to help you to save towards your child's or a child's or, or teenager even, their college education. And Wealth Builder is for anybody who really is just saving towards or investing towards anything in particular for the medium to long term. So again, have a conversation and we'll be happy to share that. Hey, Odian, what's happening? Yes, you see always me one on the screen. Normally there would be a guest by now, right? Um, we're not seeing Clive, so we are calling his cell phone people. <laughs> we are calling his cell phone. So guess what now? We are just going to have a little interaction while we try and make sure that everything is okay with Clive, you know, because he was ready. He had his papers and everything in front of him, saying, yeah, man, I'm having pints and ting, ting, ting. And then poor Clive, his laptop just went berserk, it looks like. So, guys, tell me, I mean, based on what we've been discussing so far, I mean, what are some of the stocks that you have questions about? I know some questions are coming in. Andrew already raised the point about the JMB graduate, great stuff. Um, would you kind of give me an idea? You know, what are some of the stocks that you're watching? I know we've had some previous episodes where we're talking about. About no, <laughs> see, my microphone card is dropping all over the place. Somebody goes home with tonight. Who goes home with? Somebody goes home with. All right. Yes, Stephanie saying JMB Group. Yeah, somebody just released some financials. And we just announced another awesome year. So in spite of COVID-19, we saw an increase in them profits. Of course, I can tell you all that now because it's been made public. And we just had an awesome year. So there were a few bits of conversation on Twitter to say, yeah, man, JMB. Fabulous P.E. ratio. Got to get them some JMB. Hmm. Not a bad idea, maybe. I don't know. I'm not going to say anything because I don't want to be coming across as biased, right? Separate, yes. Love separate as well. That's another one that came up because you're talking about distribution. You're talking about the kinds of products and services that people tend to be like, yeah. Um, it's a time when we're going to buy that kind of stuff because people don't really have a lot to spend on discretionary expenditure, you know, where, you know, you can afford luxury items and so on and so forth because, hey, we're still in a pandemic, but we need to eat. We need to buy the necessities and companies like Sephora do that. Great. Thanks, Ashley. Thanks, Ketty. Anybody else? Yes, came on present. Carib Cement. Interesting. I've heard some discussions about that too, guys. I heard some discussions uh, because at the end of the day, there's still some construction going on. Some days I wonder where the money is, where all these people have buying all of these places. I don't really know, but there's construction going on. And hey, if construction is going on, you need some cement to do that. And that's probably something to look at. You know, who knows? Again, I'm not the expert, but I think that's a reasonable one. Fontana. I'm a Fontana investor myself, coincidentally, KC. You know, and if y'all can tell me why you say Fontana, that would be great. Um, but yeah, Fontana been doing very well. I mean, certainly when you're going to the pharmacy, them on, on a weekend or anytime, they're doing very, very well. It's nice in there, though. They have a very nice setup in Fontana. I love it. Service is great. Cygnus, baby. I love it, Ashley. I'm a Cygnus investor as well. Um, you know, hey, I, my advisor recommended it and, you know, no regrets so far. Absolutely. Big up to the Cygnus team. A um, couple of JMB alums up in Cygnus. So, you know, they come from greatness. So that's probably a good thing. Tyrone Berger. Yeah, man, we're still in construction there. Yeah, not a, not a, bad, not a bad thought because, hey, things are being built. You need some paint to put on them homes. So, yeah, love that. JP, Jamaica producers, yes, yeah, still talking about some necessities. People got to eat. People got to eat. I love that one. I said that looks like a good one. GK, Grace Kennedy coming up. Well, GK doing pretty awesome. Again, Grace Kennedy, as you know, is not just food. 
Although food is a good thing in a pandemic and in lockdown and we're doing a lot of cooking from home. So that's a good thing. But GK is also in the money transfer business and the banking business as well. Financial services, insurance. And GK doing pretty well. So yeah, definitely, definitely another good one to look at. Guardian. Mm, yeah, we just saw NCB just giving us some nice shares on the open market to, to take advantage of there and purchase. Let's see how that pans out. But hey, you know, part of the NCB group, probably not a bad thing, given how NCB has been doing. All right. Then now we have um, we think, oh, yes, we think out still in the necessities field. Love that, love that, love that. Sajikor, Sajikor, doing well, doing well. Love that, love that. And I think Clive is back, but for whatever reason, you know, I think what happened is maybe it's Clive's girlfriend says so she had to lock off this camera because all of these ladies were commenting too quickly on Clive. Clive, can you, can you, can you? <laughs> yeah, I guess what? I can hear you, but it is saying, it is telling me that. The um the app is unable to access my camera. Okay, so, and you're in a browser or an app? Yes, I'm in Chrome, so there must okay. be some conflict here. Yeah, yeah. it's all yeah. good. Well, you know what, Clivey? We're going, we're going to work through it. How that go? Because we yes. can hear you. Because it's yes. it's it would be nice to see you, but I mean, yes. we just going go through. Up. Yeah, you never know. You never know. But we were just having a great discussion here, Clivey, with all the folks here in the chat. I was asking them to kind of share with me what are some of the stocks that they've been kind of keeping their eye on. Mm -hmm. um, so, hey, we probably should draw straws to see if they come up in Clivey's master list. Okay. So, guys, what you say? We're ready, we're ready, we're ready. Okay, so, Clivey, yes. So, back to the first question, Clivey. We were saying that, you know, you know, we had a, we've been seeing a kind of a, bear scenario you know price is not really going in the direction that a lot of investors would want them to go over the past year and change you know starting from before covid if funnily enough people thought it was covid no not entirely um and then now there seems to be some kind of a little uptick happening i don't know could you kind of just level set and clarify for us what's happening right now in the stock market and what can we reasonably expect i guess in terms of the trajectory in the near future what's what's your assessment okay well yes um the market well first and foremost the market has its seasonality cycles then sorry that's the term this is cyclicality you know and um yes the market will always have its ebb and flow for example let me state uh, in 2019, the market did well. First and foremost, what impacts the market is the macroeconomic condition, you know. And interestingly, confidence is one, you know. Macroeconomic condition, confidence that it will continue. And, you know, the, 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 the powers that be is very serious about moving the economy into another level. And then, um, you know, capital will be released. And that happened. Capital meaning money, you know, start to invest. Of course, our larger companies are publicly listed. Um, so the market moves in cycles. Um, but what is interesting is that COVID-19 interrupted the cycle. You know, that was a great interrupter, you know. Um, so even though the market was kind of trend had well, had trended down, um, which during the summer period, the market is in a lull, uh, prices are lower, uh, volume is lower. It's the normal during the summer. Just imagine people are going, children are on holiday, uh, personal household expenditure increase, so people are not investing as much. People are preparing for school, you know. At that point in time, also business are thinking about expanding, so the summer is a lull. And we were kind of coming out of that in the latter part of 2019. You remember that was JMB's big year when we raised how much billions of dollars acquired this big stake in such a core. So the market was kind of doing okay slowly upticking in anticipation of all these big strategies that companies had in place and then the great interrupter that was covid you know which had this big lull you know so um that would have caused a decline in the market uh that of course confidence first would be hit meaning that even before uh the fundamentals the financials of company were impacted you know people knew somewhere down the line it would have been impacted so they began to sell and usually it you know there's a little it's called the technical part of the market. You have the fundamental, which is the financial, the real things that drive companies. You know, that is, you know, you're building out your plant and machinery, you're employing new people, you're spending money, and, you know, um, the, the growth of the business, uh, government policies, um, 
fiscal as well as monetary policies. These are real things that affect the company performance. And then the technical part is how you and I, the investor, behave. Our emotions, our anticipation, you know, that is how that impact. So the technical part kind of took over and there's a little overplay in the selling part of the market. So the market had a significant precipitous decline. Uh, in the March, April, May, that's when we began our lockdown, probably about mid to late February. Mm -hmm. You know, we really got into the lockdown about March. So there's a big sell-off in the market. And of course, companies would have been impacted thereafter. That is, when you look at the financials of some companies, you saw where, uh, you know, revenue and profitability would have been impacted. You know, yes. Yeah, because it's been a rough year. It's been a rough year with the pandemic. Um, you know, so many businesses have been impacted, um, some more than others. Um, so in terms of, as we see the kind of a turnaround, do we expect a more positive trajectory going forward is what I'm, what I'm gathering from what you're saying, Clive, as more people get vaccinated, as protocols and restrictions become hopefully more relaxed, hopefully. Um, do we expect some kind of positive trajectory happening, um, perhaps? Yes. You know, interestingly, a business does what a business does. Eh? That is, um, is a living entity, living legal entity, you know. So the business is going to do what is necessary to survive. So business began to adjust. That is, we saw where online classes, you know, online, um, these remote delivery, you know, a, a new industry popped up. Um, and people communicating online and doing business online and working and making money and generating revenue online. So business began to readjust. So even though they got a big hit, you know, they started to take steps to mitigate that and they started to drive revenue slowly up. So, um, so the overreaction on the part of investors, that is, they just dumped in the marketplace and the average index went down like between 25 to 30 percent. But by summer last year, you know, investors started to come back into the marketplace and therefore drive prices back up. But companies had begun to take the necessary actions, you know, to protect revenue and to minimize cost, you know. What yeah. is interesting though, what is interesting though, I said, they said that there's a silver lining behind the dark cloud. There's, there always is, you know. I know these sayings that will come from country are different all over the world. And interesting, every single, we can look at every single crisis, whether it's a national crisis or and in this case, a global crisis. Companies found ways to kind of reinvent themselves, you know, to become leaner and more efficient, you know, and therefore usually more profitable thereafter. So that yeah. is what we expect. And in fact, some companies' industries are resilient, you know, they don't move as much during the cycle of the pandemic. As a matter of fact, we know that technology companies did a little better, right? But food companies did well, food processors and distributors did well. And as indicated on the results we saw from some of these listed companies, from Dermont Trading to Separate to Grace, they all did quite well through the pandemic. You know? Yeah. Yes, yeah. Is. Yeah. Grace is still reporting their financial portal report just, um, just a while ago. Uh, results of several food products did very, very well during the pandemic. So the point I'm raising is that investors uh, came back into the marketplace and then companies started to do what is necessary to reduce yeah. the impact on the company and therefore yeah. we saw a turnaround of, of financials of results and we have seen some companies still struggling through but we have seen quite a number of them make a turnaround yeah I expect yeah that to continue absolutely yeah there's there's no quick fix there's no quick fix fix and as we say we're really slowly coming out of the pandemic i mean first world countries are reporting statistics like 40 percent vaccination rate and all of these things we are probably barely at one percent by last count so still early days for us we still do still have a while before i think we can say you know we are as close to normal post-covid normal as whatever that can look like but i do appreciate the point that businesses you know have been adjusting as best as they can depending on the sector that they're in and mm -hmm. things so clive before again we move into the, the real meat of the matter in terms of the stocks that you believe we should watch could you kind of just go back into quickly what are the basic fundamentals to selecting a stock because okay. while you were off you know mm -hmm. while you were off screen we, we, we you know i was trying to continue the conversation and i was reminding everybody you know that at the end of the day we want to be very clear that these stocks that we're talking about stocks to watch are really just that in the sense that 
We're not saying that you need to run out and go buy these tomorrow because mm -hmm. the reason and the basis on which you choose a stock, mm -hmm. of course, will vary from right. investor to investor. Right. Okay. Exactly. Um, so I just wanted us to kind of continue to level set by before we get into the, the, the meat of the matter of the, of the five stocks and, and more. What are the basic fundamentals that people must consider when choosing a stock or okay. company, publicly listed company to invest in, please? Right. Okay, cool. Well, you know, first we'll talk about the fundamentals. And when we use the word fundamental, we mean those that directly impact companies, numbers, money, cost, you know, these things. That's fundamental. What's the fundamental? So we'll look at that first. Um, let's start at the very top. You know, it starts with um the, the the policies that guide the economy so it starts with the bank of jamaica that controls money supply our director you know influence money supply and, and you know that's a necessary thing and it's also with the fiscal side which is the government how government direct expenditures okay <clears throat> and spend God, that's a big influence on the economy you're muted terry that's okay sorry you know what i was doing clive i switched off my mic to to, to tell my children that they should be in bed i see one run like a rug rat running right here so and it's okay. me and them alone so i'm like you should be in bed so <laughs> i'm sorry guys we're juggling sorry clive okay, so it wasn't cool. you i was just sorry thank you i see okay no problem cool mm -hmm. so so once that is set you know and by now by now we know that the government, I want to say government, respective, I'm not talking about party. The government, we know, is well set in terms of the objective of growing the economy, you know. And when you grow the economy, yes, it's about employment and people being economically benefited. We know that that's set. That is a given. Now, companies now, companies' performance. Um, company belong to a particular sector, you know. Um, let's say a sector. We call it electronic. We call it online. This technology-driven is a sector. We see a condition that now creates, gives some some um impetus if you can't use that word to that area of business so that sector looks like is a, is a thriving sector you know so people are going to put capital and money into that sector so that the sector then we look at the individual company a company of course when you're deciding what company you want to look at the financials of the company so your your research personnel your advisor will say you know let me look at the balance sheet of this company what is the balance sheet the balance sheet really is the accumulation of the value of the company. From the company start, it started with a little cash and a piece of building and a little car. That's in the balance sheet is the asset, you know. You use them things that to generate some revenue. When you make a little revenue and you make it, you take, take out your cash and you make a little profit, you put take that little profit and put it into the balance sheet. And then you start the cycle the next year. That is, whatever is in the balance sheet, you use it and generate more revenue, minus the cost, you make a profit, you take that profit, put it into the balance sheet. So the balance sheet is an accumulation of value in the company. So it's total assets minus total liability. And liability is not bad enough because guess what? I'm telling you, 90, probably all the companies listed on the stock on the, the, the stock exchange had to go by borrowing money somewhere along the Well, raising equity, right? Capital, money, cash injected, where the owners are borrowing. So the net asset now is, in a simple manner, the fair health of the company. Right? So the balance sheet is strong. Uh, you know, and the advisor will say, yes, the balance sheet is good. Now you want to say consistency of cash, well, profit first. You know, the business activity is it generating consistent profit. Why? Remember, you know, after each business cycle, the profit that remains is placed into the balance sheet. And that adds and builds up the value of the company. So if you are depleting by making losses each year, well, if you are making losses each year, you are depleting the balance sheet. If you are making profit each year, you are adding to the balance sheet. Right. So of course, you must be making profit each year. Now, what is interesting, the profit and loss is really a 12-month cycle. You know, the balance sheet is accumulated over 10, 20, 30, 100 years. The PL is strictly for that 12-month cycle. Or you can break it down into six, nine months, six months, three months, right? And you make your profit and you put it into the balance sheet. So I want to say a good profit and loss statement that generates profit. And many of us, what we see quickly, easily, is the earnings per share. So you see it move from 10 cents to 12 cents. Yes, that's growing. Okay. Hold on a minute there, Clive. You break that down for me here. So now, what is earnings per share? Okay. Is that the same thing as P.E.? Not necessarily, not, no, no, okay. it, isn't, so, it isn't. Yeah, what is earnings per share in English, please? Okay, in English, earnings per share. 
Um, right. the, yeah, the company generates some revenue. Well, you know, guess what? A man, okay, you want, um, man, woman, anybody. Um, the company is divided into stock units, right? JMB has what? Nearly 2 billion shares outstanding. NCB has about 3.8 billion shares outstanding. Scotia about 3.68 billion. NCB over 4 billion. So that number of shares divided by the profit that is made. Oh, so, so total profit divided, divided by, the, by the total shares. number of shares. Right. Okay, so, so Max. Okay, why, thank you. Right. And why do we look at earnings per share? What you and I buy is individual stock units. We're not buying the whole JMB, the whole Grace, the whole separate. No, we're buying individual stock units. So out of the two, the, the, the 1.99 billion, 1 billion shares in JMB, I'm buying 5,000 units. So how do I measure the worth of this 5,000? It's by what each stock unit generates in terms of revenue, in terms of profit. So the earnings per share is really the profit attributable to that one stock unit that I'm all right. right. Okay. Okay. Right. So, so the price now I'm paying for that stock. You see, what is the profit attributable to that stock price? That is where the P price over earnings per share comes in. Oh. So let's explore that. The stock price, 30. Let's say JMB is about 34. Traded up today, and our results came out top this morning, and the stock price traded up from about 32 something to about 35 plus. I think it touched mm -hmm. 36.7 today. Yeah, right? But but you're buying this stock for $36. You're looking at the earnings per share hmm, of a dollar plus, you know? So when you divide it to get what? You should get about eight. Um, I worked on the earnings per share is about eight, right? So let's say, um, well, let's use last week's closing price. All right, 33.5. Um, yeah. So the, the earnings per share is about $3.80 something. So in a, and just simple, what it is simply saying is how profitable is this stock unit I'm buying? Mm. So if I'm paying $33 for this stock or $35 or $36, what is the profit generated by this $33 I paid for this stock, this $35 I paid for this stock? Or let's say in the case of Grace, that traded as high as $98 today. You know, I'm asking... For this stock that is I'm buying for $98, what is the profitability of the single stock unit? That is the P-E ratio, price over the earnings per share. Mm. For the lower the P-E, the better, all being equal, the lower the P-E, the better the stock is. Ah. Because it means that I'm earning more on this $99. Let's, look at, let's compare two companies, $10 each. Company A, $10. You buy it in the market for ten dollar per stock unit. Company B, you buy it in the market for ten dollar per stock unit. Company A has an earnings profit per share of two dollars. Company B has a profit per share of one dollar. So mm. ten company A divided by two is five. Five. B ten the same value for the stock price divided by earnings per share of one dollar is ten. So the lower P is considered better, more attractive. Mm. So that's how the earnings per share is related to the number of shares, the profit divided by the number of shares. How profitable is that stock unit I'm buying? And then the PE now is a measurement metric when you're comparing two companies. So the lower the PE, the better the buy. All oh. else being equal, the exceptions to every rule, but all else being equal, the lower the PE, the better the buy. All right. Okay. So that is what, because I saw some people, I saw some people on Twitter talking about JMB's PE because I was we were, again while you were off where you know somebody were asking people to share the stocks they're watching and somebody said JMB we would have released our financials at right, you know we just PE finished that great yeah for about 13 point something to for about 8.6 or 8.7 mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. it, it is concept right now among all the financial stocks and on the the main market is it is the most attractive yeah. Just based on that measurement. Metric. Just based on that That's measurement. Metric, yeah. Hmm. Something to consider. Um. Just to say, though, Clive, Odian here, Odian, our statistician who always keeps us on our toes, is making a comment here that some people also look at just buying into dividend. Yes. Paying stocks as yes. another reason to purchase. So whether the PE is sexy or not, no pun intended. Mm -hmm. Um, there are some stocks, I guess, that are notorious for paying some great yes. dividends. So exactly. that could be an option why you'd exactly. want to invest in, right. in that particular. Right. Now, just to continue with the previous question and we'll flow straight into this statement. 
Um, yes, sir, look at the balance sheet, look at the PL, and then the cash flow is important, especially cash flow from operations. Why? You're running a business, you're generating profit, you sell your goods, but you're not collecting your cash. However, you have cash expense, you have to pay your workers, you have to pay your rent, you must buy gas and fill up on the trucks, you know, these things, you must pay your taxes. So if you're not generating cash, sufficient cash to run, you're going to run into difficulty at some point in time. And the longer you're good, your revenue remains outside, uncollected, is the more likely you will not collect it. So your cash flow statement is important. So a positive cash flow, especially your operating cash flow, which shows the operating cash flow is strictly attributed to the profit you make in that accounting period, right? So that accounting period, you make your profit, how does it reflect in terms of your cash flow? Are you collecting your cash? So a good um, cash flow statement also is very important. Those are the fundamentals. Now, as um, indicated, dividend must be paid from this. This is why you need a positive cash flow because every single year companies declare dividend. Most companies, um, some more frequent than others, eh? right? based on various reasons. Not good. It doesn't necessarily mean a company is good or bad, but you must have cash to pay your dividend. Now, for someone, let's just for argument's sake, eh? um, you buy a stock, you know that it's a long-term security, so you have to wait for the next five, four years, 10 years to generate some return so you can sell it back and make a gain. But in between that time, you want some earnings. This is where the dividend comes in. You know? So the cash flow from this company, while you're waiting for the value of the company to grow, even if you want to be it to your children, you know, the cash flow coming in is what is going to sustain you you know, or give some value to the, to the security. Uh, persons who are retired, you know, you don't have, you're not working anymore, that income stream is disrupted. Well, luckily, if you have invested sufficiently in stocks, that cash flow, and I can tell you that there's a strong demand for preference stocks right now because the yield on them is fairly attractive, you know, yeah. but there's probably not enough listed on the market now. Yeah. So cash flow is important in terms of dividend payout. <coughs> No, yeah, I, I would agree with that. You know, I I have a few stocks in my portfolio where sometimes, you know, that, that qu every quarter or however, however often I really do look forward to those payments. They help. Yes. Yeah. So, yes, absolutely. So that's certainly something to look at. There was a question here from Kenny Powell. Kenny asking, you know, though, how do we find out, you know, how do, where do, those companies that have been paying dividends, maybe historically companies, where is that information available publicly? Yes, yes, we produce it as well as, you know, various, yes, it's on the stock, stock exchange web, website. Yes, the stock exchange publishes um, the dividend. Well, every company is mandated to publish any information considered material information, meaning that it yes. can have impact on the company. The market. No, that is part of it, dividend. And the JC publishes this on its website. We put it together also in a spreadsheet and we calculate from that dividend yield. So it is really, it's our footwork, you know, that will produce that information for Yes. Um, right. Um, yes. And it's simply, it's simply the consistency of companies. There are quite a few companies that pay dividend. As a matter of fact, many companies have a dividend policy, yes. which, which indicates and they're, they're bounded by it how they will pay a dividend. Some says they will pay 20% of, of profit out as dividend. Some, they'll pay 40%. Some states that they will pay, that their, 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 their nominal dividend payout will not decrease. <laughs> that is, as the stock price go, the yield, of course, will, you know, if you get a dollar dividend every time, and the price going up from 10 to, then the yield is going down. But the nominal amount will not go down. Um, some will simply say that they'll pay every quarterly, that is every three months. So various companies have different dividend policies. And um, we have a document, a sheet here that is produced, and it shows the average dividend yield over the period. And it can use that as an indication of what is which companies pay dividend, more dividend and consistent dividend. Yes, yes. Sounds good. I mean, maybe we could do a quick plug here um, of the Financial Market Caller, which is an e-newsletter that we send out every Friday, I believe it is, Clivey. Yes. If you go on the homepage of JMMB Jamaica's website, that's JM 
www.jmmb.com. You scroll down a little on the home page, you'll see a block that invites you to subscribe to the Financial Market Caller newsletter, which kind of gives an overview of what would have happened in the past week, highlights, lowlights, sort of thing, and, I, and, and all the information is there. So if you are interested in getting that kind of information on a weekly basis, then feel free to subscribe. Go to our website, the home page. You scroll down a little bit and you see a little um, tab there for you to input your email address, submit your email address so you can get that newsletter in your inbox every week. So awesome, Clive, man. I see some people just dropping their thing in the comments. Everybody is waiting with bated breath. Want to big up and welcome people who have joined us recently. Yes, Cl um, Clive is a person. He's not a bot, okay? <laughs> just to say, Clive, we're just having some technical issues with Clive's camera. He, he was on screen for the half an hour. We logged on in dress rehearsal. He started out on screen, and then it's like the thing said, well, we don't really want to connect with this camera, and that was the end of that. So we logged out, logged back in, but, you know, life goes on, and we're hearing him just fine, and he's giving us some great information. So thanks, everybody. Again, call, text, WhatsApp, DM, tag anybody who needs to be and hear this conversation and be a part of this conversation and get the awesome nuggets. Um, Clive didn't drop off, did he? Say no. <laughs> Because I don't see him now. <laughs> Here he is. Thank God. <laughs> Come on, I see Clive disappear. I'm like, no. <laughs> Wonderful. We got back Clive. You're back, Clivey. Yes, I am. Um, yes. Man, I tell you, Murphy's Law. Somebody goes home with I don't know what it is. Maybe <laughs> we need to go to St. Thomas tomorrow. I don't know. Maybe that's what we need to do. But here we are. Yes, Vinu, he is here. So, Clivey, we're going to drop it now. Drop mm -hmm. it. Tell us. Tell us, number one, well, not in any particular order, right? You're just mm -hmm. spitting them out to us, right? Not in any particular order. Okay, right? okay, oh, okay. No, 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 if you want to, you're the boss, you know. I, I oh, just want to, okay. are you giving us in terms of rank, in terms of your number one, or are you no, just listing no, them in no, no order? No, no order. Why? I mean, okay. I can't predict how and why a stock price moves at times, you know. Right, but, right. Yeah. So okay. here's what I, here's what I, I, I have our, our official recommendation from our research team. We All right. That, these guys put a lot of work. They really dig so deep that, I mean, I, I really, I, I sometimes have to sit down and have a discussion with them. And I don't fully understand some, some of the things I say, but I understand enough to say, okay. <laughs> right. So, um, Derriman Trading. Derriman right. Trading. That's right. the first one. Derriman right. Trading. That, a, a lot has been happening with that company. Right? They raised about over $4 billion just recently. Stick another pin. Who is Der what tra Derriman Trading does? Because I don't think everybody okay. is aware. Okay, cool. You know? All right, I have some info here, so let me see if I can. I'm sorry, yeah, because I know, sorry to put you on the spot oh, a bit, no. because sometimes we assume and people hear our name. So, like, people would know readily what Grace Kennedy does because they've been right. around for 90 odd years, and it's right. like, okay. But Derriman is a little new, yes, and it is. maybe it not is. everybody kind of knows what do they do right. exactly. It is. Okay, well, Derriman is, is, um, is a is a food is really a it started out as a food distribution company like a retail supermarket um oh yeah it it it, it yeah it retails yes it has its retail supermarket thing but mm -hmm. it's a wholesaler and a distributor distributor yes right that's yes. primarily what it is food and products the, right and the, 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 the significant um company holding is Sampars Limited which is the the distribution arm of the group. Right? Okay. But sub subsequent to that, though, they have expanded. Uh, they have acquired like the majority shares, 62% in Caribbean Flavors and Fragrance. That, too, is a public listed company. And what Caribbean Flavors and Fragrance does, they make chemicals and these type of things used in cakes, juices, um, confectionaries, and other type of chemicals. Right? Caribbean Flavors and Fragrance. And it's the only kind in Jamaica. So it has room for expansion and it serves the Caribbean, exports to the Caribbean and parts of Latin America. So they have the majority shares in that. Uh, the, um, this packet making company, um, can't remember the name of the packet making company that it, it, it took, uh, bought it out in yeah. uh, probably about two years ago. Mm -hmm. right? um, you know, these, 
we call it these these when you carry things these um machines that carry i'm not sure why why that is bought but i suppose yeah. the, of the business it complements the business right? absolutely with distribution yes right. transport and transporting exactly. things you package them safely for transport exactly. that sort of thing see the bought the majority shares in select grocers Pallet making. Yes, see right. our, 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 our audience supporting us. Thanks, guys. Sanya, Alistair, Eileen, pallets. Yes. Good. Thank you. Yes. Mm -hmm. uh, wood, wood cats. Cats. Of course, most recently, they acquired two entities in the United States. All right. Really? Yes. So, so this, and let me, here's the thing though, with them. They are folk, and I think most business now are focused on the number, the data. The data is important. That is, you remove the emotion, you remove the connections, you remove the preferences and the privilege, and you focus strictly on the data. And they have indicated that like three years ago, that they are focusing on the data. That is, where's the cost, where's the generating re revenue, generating capability, and they really trust the model, the business model accordingly. So... That is what I believe has well has generated the return for them, you know. And this is why the market was confident enough in them to give them four billion dollars earlier this year to further the expansion, the growth of the of the group. Right? Mm. That's their month trading. Right? Mm. Yeah, if I may add, I mean, they seem to have a pretty solid management team in place. I mean, exactly. Ian Kelly, one of their principals, actually used to be in financial services investments for many years. So he yes. knows his stuff. So yeah. I'm not surprised when you say that, you know, they have the technical capability to be able to look at the numbers, see the opportunity and make strategic decisions in that regard, because they have the technical expertise clearly to be able to do that. So I think that's exactly. great. Big, big up to Ian. Really great guy. Thanks. Um, Great. Great. So that's your first one. You're, mm -hmm. you're wrapped on that. Yeah. All right, guys. Yeah. Yes. So we can give a little more information on it later. Yeah. Um, honey bun. Honey bun. That's mm -hmm. the second one. Okay. No. Yeah, no. This. You know. Here's. There's a very simple approach. I believe we talk about the financials and the fundamentals, but. Usually, I like to start with people who lead the companies, you know, the, the, the significant principals who are the significant shareholders. And sometimes, many times, they are the, 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 the managers and the directors in the company. And it's, I think it's good to start with them. Where do you get information on them? Many, many times, these are fairly public figures, you know. So you hear the, the pronouncements, the statements they make. Uh, they are a member of this board, you know, et cetera, et cetera. You can pick up information on them. Uh, some simple things, and you say, are they capable? That's a question I ask. No, Honeybone came public. You know, Honeybone took the investing public's capital, and they have really turned it around. You know, so they are very creative. They have acquired new equipment. They have created products, new products. And what is interesting that during the pandemic, when sales dip in the first quarter, they managed to went to the drawing board, did their market research, and came out with some new products. Um, some, I think it's some honey sliced bun, honey bun, as well as um, one of those baked product, you know. And I saw, I, I, I read through the magazine, and it's interesting that they don't just bake, but they have all the necessary quality assurance processes in place. I mean, in the mm -hmm. statement, they'll tell you that the latest international ISO standard for equipment and processes that they are certified, fully certified. Well, it has shown in their results, I see. Mm. And they have really done well even during the pandemic. The quicker, you know, so the resilience of the management team is important. You know? And I think they've really demonstrated that, you see. And the fundamentals of the company, we see where profit has increased and the various metric, um, PE, book value, earnings per share, et cetera, has indicated that this company has done well. And I think that they have still have some growth, you know. And yeah. If, yeah. And if they did well during the pandemic, several of their, when schools locked down, several of their product lines took a hit. Again, yes. But they went to the drawing board, they came out with two brand new, Product and I mean when I say product I mean food. Yeah. Right, San Saniel or Saniel. I'm sorry, I hope I forget pronunciation. Saying could, it could be the coconut roll. I don't know because it's a coconut yes. roll. Yes. Yeah, I'm saying it's new. Right. Yes, but I know yeah, mm -hmm. and it sucks very quite successful. So uh, you know, and I mentioned that because there's another company, another baking company listed that since coming public has not done well. You know, and it must be really. I mean, yeah. but one of them that the marketplace is there, you know, and if mm -hmm. you pay the right product for the marketplace, it will sell and price it well, you know. Mm -hmm. 
that other entity could have done that, I'm sure, right? So management, people, makes a difference here. Absolutely. Um, and I mean, you, sorry, you're going to continue on Honeybun or are you ready to move on? No, I was going to move on, but make a statement. Okay, no, no, I was just acknowledging, um, you know, that when I go to the Stock Exchange Best Practices Awards, which obviously is is a totally different thing to, you know, a lot of the times to what you are referring to, but even just being a spectator of those Best Practices Awards over the last few years, Honeybun continues, I think, to really dominate because well, they're on yes. the junior market, right? They're a junior market yes. company. Yes. And I get used to hearing Honeybun name call quite a bit <laughs> at those yes, awards. Do. Yes. Doing very well as a yes. small, you know, as you say, largely family owned business. It's well, right. not family owned, but certainly family led business, mm -hmm. family managed. They really are doing some good stuff. And, yeah. and I will concur. Um, yeah. Kudos to them on yes. that. And see all the Honeybun clients here. Yes, David, cinnamon, raisin bread, banana bread. Um, mm. Charm says cinnamon bread from honey bun sell off. Come on, <laughs> Love come on. It. Yes, I'm, they are, I'm telling you, that their products taste good. I'm telling you. They yes, do. I know. I yeah. mean, I my waistline says I shouldn't be eating as much, <laughs> but you know, it tastes good. Mm. Yeah, and the, the, I mean, a business is a business, you know, and these things are important, you see. So, um, to be yeah. certain. Yeah, to ensure that the processes are internationally certified, the equipment are, it says a lot of that, uh, they, they might, where their mind is, you know, they're serious about the market. Yeah. And, uh, well. and as you That's say, good. in as much as schools would have closed, which I can imagine, as you said, that would have caused a significant dip for them. They would have taken a hit because they rely on schools to drive a lot of their sales. Yes. They pivoted, were able to still, you know, yes. come out relatively strong, all, thing, all things considered. And bearing in mind that hopefully we're hoping for schools to reopen in September, please hear our cry. Mm. <laughs> it's like, <laughs> it's like woo, it's the parent on. over here. Yeah. It's like, you know, you can imagine then with this pivot, plus hopefully an uptick or reemergence of this kind of sales they used to yes. enjoy pre-pandemic, yes. it should actually be a good, pretty good, a good future for them. I think that's great. Yeah, all right, all yeah. right. Kerry no. says, "May as well buy what you eat and be a part yeah, owner of the company." True. So if you yeah. love the products, why not invest in it? Yeah, I think man. that's great. And, yes, and, Clivey. Mm -hmm. yeah, and I, I like to, I like to buy the publicly listed companies and the ones that I own. Yeah, man. Yeah, when you go to the supermarket, yes, <laughs> yes, because you are supporting them, so you're not just a shareholder, sit, you know, eating or uh, eating off of the profits, mm -hmm. but you are a customer that support exactly. and putting it back into the business. You know, exactly. if you are not supporting the company that you own shares in, then who you expect to do it? You know, we, right. it's like you know, reciprocal what goes around comes around. Comes awesome. Around. So, we have exactly. Derriman Trading, you're tracking it, guys. Derriman Trading <laughs> and Honeybun. What's the third <laughs> one, Uncle Clive? Okay, um. And these are some of the ones that are recommended by our research people, because there are others, right, that are like... Absolutely. Um, Cygnus. Cygnus. Um, yeah, Cygnus Capital Investment. Um, <clears throat> this company is a still fairly young company. They've done really well. They're, it's a niche market where they, um, they're a financial company. And yeah. they, they don't just accept the... Well, how do I distinguish them? They create unique financial products for their clients. They are an investment management investment advisory company. So they finance but structure special um, financing instruments for their clients, you know, mm. and they monitor them along. They are fairly diversified. I think about 53% of their business is in our companies in Jamaica. Uh, they are widely distributed. In the in from tourism to manufacturing to distribution, so they really spread the business around to mitigate against you know risk. You know, um, they are they have businesses as far as the Eastern Caribbean islands. You know, uh, so they, they are a fairly diversified company, and just mm. the results they have done fairly well. Yes. Uh, the valuation metric again shows how well they are. Uh, for example, the PE is 13.87, you know, rough call at 14. That, that is, again, as we indicated, the price over the earnings per share. Uh, that is not bad in the financial sector when compared to either the junior market financials listed or the regular market financial. That's not bad. But they have a lot of prospect for growth. Right? Now, I've looked at their um, some of their financials where I have some of the documents open, not trying to 
uh, see what I can find, if I can find the information. But my, well, it, it is a nature, okay. Uh, their cash flow, their balance sheet is good. Their profit and loss is excellent. Um, their cash flow is a little lagging where they have negative um, operating cash flow, but it's not unusual given the nature of the, that business. Right, I was going to say. Right. Yeah, it's the nature of that. I mean, you lend a million US. You're not going to get it back in within the next 20 Right years. away, exactly. So in your program you're, you're working on. So it's understandable, you know. Um, the pay dividend consistently, I've heard, I've had questions were asked about that. Then if the operating cash flow is negative, where do they pay the dividend from, you know? Well, certainly we can only guess, you see. But it's a properly managed company. Their operations are fairly diversified um, across economic sectors, across geographic um, areas, um, region. <clears throat> um, no, the average fund length of the indicated is about 2.24 million US dollar per entity. So they have in excess, my calculation, they have they have um off lended to about 32 to 34 different entities. So this company is fairly solid in terms of its risk profile. Mm. Right? And they emphasize that heavily in the financial statements. You see? Because it is risk, yes, you lend money, but you know, and the results, their financials are even though they have some Jamaican dollar exposure, but their financials are computed in U.S. dollars, which means that I'm sure that when they lend in U.S., they expect payment, you know, revenue in U.S. Absolutely. Right? So that, again, augurs well for you, the investing public. And, of course, securities cross-listed in U.S. as well as J dollar. So you can invest as U.S. in U.S. and, you know, generate a return on your investment you will, and in U.S., so yes. that works, uh, yeah, for this particular company. Wow, love yes. it, love it. You know, I think when you know when you talk about signals, because as you say, you know, you're looking at the cash flow and you're wondering how, oh, where, <laughs> you know, the dividends come from. You say we can only guess, but you know, um, as you talk about, you know, the strong risk profile and so on, I think you know, Cygnus is 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 kind of an example of first of all strong leadership and yeah. talented leadership. I mean, we even have a couple of JMMB alums <laughs> in the yeah. leadership there. You know, we want to get a little mm -hmm. shameless plug, right. you know what I'm saying? Um, but, you know, I mean, strong leadership team, um, great, bright set of people, driven, knows what knows their stuff. And then, of course, as publicly listed companies, the Jamaica Stock Exchange, you know, they don't play. You know, they keep exactly. every, you know, they, you, you got to do what you got to do. You have to do your disclosures. You have to meet this thing, 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 thing. So even if I guess you could say there could be questions about how this, this one do this thing so and it, it it's because it's not a, a tip a traditional business model like what you would see and a lot of other financial entities are structured like at the end of the day they have to meet the rigors and the standards of the regulators that govern the industry and that's the confidence that jamaican investors and investors who choose to invest in jamaica can have is that we have an awesome body of regulators from fsc to boj to stock exchange who really make sure that the integrity of the process and and the soundness of these entities and so on is is maintained by virtue of you know all of the rigors that we all have to go through as publicly listed companies and investors can be confident in that so i think this is just another great example of all of those things coming together to create awesome value for investors isn't this fabulous yes david telling us that Cygnus just lent 5.5 million US. Oh, no, couldn't give me some to Norbrook Equity Partners Limited. Yeah. I love some of that 5.5, not as a loan, though. I'll just take a gift. But wonderful. <laughs> thanks, David. Loving, loving the interaction. But yeah, thanks for that. So, who is the next one on the list, Clive? Yes. Um, <clears throat> we have Las M, Lasco Manufacturing. Uh, Lasco. Yes. <clears throat> In fact, the Lasco group have been doing well but you know we selected last m um <clears throat> because, because you have lasco manufacturing lasco distributors and, and lasco Las financial, financial something right. like that right so we're talking now about lasco manufacturing and as much as we acknowledge that the group is doing well guys and i'm saying the group is not doing well but we're just saying we're just highlighting lasco manufacturing as a particular stock to watch sorry clive we go ahead yes um <clears throat> And this stock has done even post-pandemic. It has done well. Uh, it's up 
uh, compared to, well, I have some prices here, February 2020, just kind of indicative of there about when the pandemic might, you know, news of the pandemic, you know, its impact on Jamaica and when investors started to react. So um, from February 2020 to now, to May, the end of May 2021, uh, last time is up 37.25%. Uh, let me look at some of the metrics here. <clears throat> All right. The, um, some of the valuation metric. Okay. Um, the PE is not bad at 16 and a third, 16.3. Um, the price to book value is a little bit, it's it's under two, which is not bad. Industry standard, roughly. It is on, uh, right on the, 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 you know, the verge of the, the, the industry standard. Um, <clears throat> but this company has a lot of potential for growth. Let me look at some of the information I pulled on here on them. Um, last M. Oh. Okay. Well, okay. Okay. Well, yes, so they're, they're, well, let, let's start with their cash flow. Um, really strong, positive cash flow. Um, about one point, the operating cash provided by operating activity, operating cash flow, uh, fairly steady, fairly flat over the last year. Uh -huh. um, they have indicated that they will uh, have some capital expenditure over the period, over the next year, and they should be expanding their manufacturing facility. So that should augur well for them. Um, oh, it looks like I missed some of the okay, data here. Right? But the metric so far looks good, and we expect them to continue to perform in the coming year. All right. Now, a few other companies I have here are, of course, Guardian Holding, which is recently listed. Uh, that's a regional insurance company have uh, here. sorry clivey sorry um yeah no i was just saying expansion is a good thing for to wrap up lasco when you spoke mm -hmm. about you know the fact that they said there's some capital expansion to happen um clearly expenditure to happen which which suggests expansion which is a great thing in this environment another positive indicator and yeah lasco is definitely one of those companies is we have some lasco fans in the house um, so definitely. So you are moving on to the next stock, Clive, which is Guardian. Yes. Uh -huh, right. So as of June, right. The, yeah. Um, last time's um, recently published financials, which is the year ended March, uh, shows a significant increase in, in operating profit um, mm. here. Right. Uh, in excess and net profit grew by 41%. But in addition to that, strong cash flow, a very solid balance sheet, and they indicated that they will be expanding their plant capacity. So we think that there's room for growth there. And remember, wow. uh, the market they serve is, is um, the, the demographics of Jamaica, they serve that demographic, which is really the low income. Yes. Uh, right. So, which is a significant and, segment of the, pop, the general population exactly. of Jamaica. Yeah. Exactly. And yeah. in terms of in terms of leadership and management, uh, since this company came public, it has generated for investors, for shareholders who bought this stock, or any one of the last score stocks uh, from let's say from inception, um, would have generated between five to six hundred percent return <clears throat> over the period. Yes, <clears throat> yes. <clears throat> so they have done well and will continue to do well. I expect them to continue to do well. Sounds good to me. And as you said, 40 odd percent growth in profit in a COVID year. I mean, that is very respectable. Yes. Yes. And expansion, expansion plans in the future, that is very respectable. We must applaud them. That's wonderful. Exactly. exactly. Awesome. Awesome. All right. So another stock to watch. What's yes. the next one? You said Guardian. Guardian. <coughs> yes. No, what I'm looking at, Guardian Holding is a regional entity. Um well, it's not restricted to a political border or a juris particular jurisdiction, meaning okay. that they have business entity in probably about, I think it's about 23 countries, including really? North America and Latin America. Yes. Really? <clears throat> yes, so they're very diversified. Um, it's one of the largest insurance companies in the region, you see, and it has a host of financial, various financial products that it offers. Now, NCB owns 62% of Guardian, just recently acquired 62% of Guardian. And the Guardian was previously listed. It was delisted and now it has relisted. Um, well, 
let's look at some of the 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 the, the, the valuation metric. Um, even at this price of seven hundred and fifty six dollars, roughly, where it closed at last week, the PE, the price over the earnings per share is nine point nine. Let's round that up to ten. That is very very low. Mm. It's very very low. Right. Uh, their financial statement thing at their balance sheet and cash flow is a very healthy company. Now, here, here's here's what I'm where I'm looking now. <clears throat> the fundamentals, the financials are one, but where's the company going? Now, of course, when you look at their management discussion analysis, they, can, they give an indication of their expansion to Latin America and Central America. But oh. my what I'm thinking on the line of NCB's acquisition. Uh, of 62% of this company. This is now a subsidiary of NCB. And what synergy can we get from that? Now, wow. it is my belief that NCB, well, I think it's no longer a secret that NCB is seeking to become an international global company, of course, by expanding its regional presence first. Yeah. Uh, several years ago, there was some attempt at being listed, <clears throat> whether through special drawing rights or directly on, on the <clears throat> North America Stock Exchange. That didn't work out, but NCB has been aggressively driving its revenue and expanding through acquisitions over the last number of years and guarding is a prize that they have. What synergy can they get as two financial entities? You know, So I think that there's a lot um, of potential, good, positive um, growth that can come. I mean, from Guardian itself indicated in their financials and look at their MDNA, NCB, we have seen their growth strategy already, you see, but the there's a reason behind the acquisition, you know, and I'm kind of trying to gather um, what synergy can we can that can be had from that um, relationship between mm. NCB and Guardian. And mm -hmm. with, a, with a stock, NCB is fairly cheap if you're using the PE metric again. Um, <clears throat> Guardian is, so there is potential individually for growth, but what synergy can come from that? And for that reason, for several reasons, fundamentally first, and for that reason, I think it's a good buy. Mm. Yes. All right. Yeah, it's going to be interesting because, as you say, NCB is a great company. And even just looking at what they've been doing as far as their thrust um, into the digital space, um, investment in technology and, and really doing some great stuff there. As right. you say, it's going to be interesting to see how that plays out as far as synergies are concerned and what it can bring to the table as a parent company for Guardian. Interesting times ahead, guys. Yes. Yeah. Ryan here is saying, hey, Ryan, welcome. Um, Guardian Holdings, it's it's for super high risk takers. What's, uh, your, what's your view why? on that, Clive? Why? I don't know. This is Ryan's view, right? Mm -hmm. I don't know. I don't no, know well, Ryan's th well, thought process. But do you think yeah. so? I mean, okay. I really just want to know your opinion. Yes. Well, the, the price is high. You know, mm -hmm. um, when it came public, when it was listed, listed, it didn't come public. When it was listed on our market, uh, the price, well, when it was listed, the equivalent price, it was listed at $582 plus Jamaican dollar, right? Uh, in Trinidad, the previous day, it traded at $2551 TT dollars. So the, the conversion rate, 582, right? Okay. Um, the first few trade, like the next day upon being listed, it traded as high as nine hundred dollars. That's about sixty something percent above its listing price. Of course, it has come down since, you know, from nine hundred to now an average seven fifty six. Traded as low as about a bit between seven thirty and seven forty last week or week before. You know, mm -hmm. but mm -hmm. in that sense, yes, it carries a risk. But this is this is the nature of price movement, especially when there's a uh, mismatch in demand and supply. Right? And there was a serious mismatch. Here's the thing. Mm -hmm. Last time Guardian Holding was listed, quite a few years back, the yeah. no supply was brought to the market. You see? Yeah. And I think this is, yeah, no supply was brought. So they're listed by invitation. I think that's a, the term when you don't actually raise capital in a market, but you just list the stock. So, you know, it has mm -hmm. public access. But they didn't, they didn't carry stocks, shares, that is from, you know, the mm -hmm. domicile jurisdiction to this market. Well, this time around they did, but it was a little bit late. So I think because people did not anticipate that NCB, for example, it was in the in the public space that yeah. brought a couple of, must say, two million shares 
for the market. It was a little bit late. But in the time being, what is interesting, though, is that our market are far more developed than it was back then when it was listed. So right now we notice, especially through us, through JMB here, our collaboration in Trinidad, through our JMB out um JMB in Trinidad, TT, as well as we have collaboration with several other financial institutions in Trinidad. Uh, they brought quite, they, I mean, they preempted the market and brought quite a lot of Guardian holding shares yeah. through what we call inter CSD, interdepository movement from oh, Trinidad okay. to Jamaica. So mm -hmm. they, they, they were quickly able to feed some of the supply, the demand for the stock. Mm -hmm. The same day it was listed. You mm -hmm. see? But again, mm -hmm. because of uncertainty, the price jumped up 60 odd percent traded as high as 900 dollars and within a few probably less than a week it came right back down to about seven maybe 800 dollars and then traded as low like a week ago or a week and a half ago to about 730 740. yeah in that yeah. sense yes but that's really because of the demand and supply thing you know yeah. but looking at the, the, the financials and the fundamentals of the company itself it's a solid company you know and yeah. they have been growing revenue um, over the last several quarters, including during the pandemic. So we expect them to continue. As a matter of fact, the, com the pandemic really, interestingly about ins the nature of insurance, the pandemic is a reason to ensure that you're insured. Is it? <clears throat> so they did well. Yes, you know? yes, mm -hmm. yes. Yeah, I think, I mean, I mean, everybody's entitled certainly to their opinion. Um, but I think that based on the nature of the Guardian business, um, insurance, right, mm -hmm. um, and, and the kind of demand that that would elicit and the historic performance of the company, as you said, it's now a subsidiary of one of the top performing financial groups in the Caribbean. I would not agree that investing in Guardian is a is is for risk takers. I mean, generally, you could say investing in equities generally is an activity that comes with some inherent risk, like all investing. Uh, but when you're looking, I guess, across different types of stocks, uh, given the nature of the companies that that are you know that have publicly listed shares on on the market that people can buy, um, I think Guardian sounds one of those that you could say, hey. You know, certainly one to watch and not one to avoid if you feel, well, I can't take no risk. You know what I mean? I, I would say that. That's my view. But everybody's entitled to their view. So, Clivey, what's the next one? Okay. <clears throat> um, Panjam. Panjam. All yes. right. Panjam. No, Panjam has, yes. Panjam has suffered during the pandemic. Oh, wow. Yeah. Really? Yes. Um, Panjam is an investment holding company. So Panjam is invested in several other listed, public listed companies oh. whose prices went down. So it would have impacted their um, p &L, you know, mm. which is the valuation of those assets. And also they invest in several privately held companies, including in the tourism and leisure industry. You see? Mm -hmm. But why do I say Panjam? <clears throat> One, it's a very large company, very strong, solid company. If you look at their balance sheet, it's one of the strongest balance sheet of all public listed companies, right? Um, even though profit fell, revenue fell and profit fell, they still managed to make profit um, generate. They didn't generate a loss at any point in time at all, you know? Uh, last quarter, March, to this one, um, they generated a substantial increase in, in, in profitability. Right, uh, earnings per share. I think last quarter March, uh, they generated zero earnings per share. That is, the profit attributed to each stock was zero, practically zero. Well, they drive that to ninety-five cents this quarter. So that is tremendous. But what it indicates is that they have a plan. Uh, they managed to reorganize and restructure themselves. I mean, sorry, being an investment holding company, sometimes you just have to wait, you know. But yeah. I, let me look at there. Let me show, give you some of the metrics here. And then we can have a look at their balance sheet. I think I'll pull that down. And um, P is 15.62. Not bad, right? But here's an indication of the strength of their balance sheet. The book value is 44.16. $44.16. That is, uh, the stock price is what? $66.50. Uh, and, and the book value is 44.16. So they're trading just a tad above their book value. Way below. The, the standard, the, the industry minimum. Um, on average here, we have about 2.52. So that's trading way below that, right? Um, <clears throat> one, we know that um, they did some, they're into property development and rental. That mm. is the bulk of their revenue, 
you know, and okay. that, yeah, uh -huh. so um, we have seen some recovery in all their business lines over the last several quarters, you see, so we see some improvement there, but. Sorry, Clive, when you say several quarters, you mean pre-pandemic? Pre, yeah, um, between last March, their okay. Year end, yes. Uh, okay, so over the last June. year, then. Okay, because right, several right. quarters is like two years. Exactly. Okay, so we're talking so about March to several June. months, maybe. Yeah. Okay, okay. Yeah. Those Got are the you. quarters. Mm -hmm. Got you. Over three months. Mm -hmm. Right. Um. Also, let me just pull up some from the, some information here on them. Sure. Sure. Okay. Panjam. Okay. All right. Now, here's what they have done over the um to, to kind of bring back profitability. You know, they 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 had well they implemented a goal uh, project on reducing cost and implement efficiencies throughout the, the all the operation operate segments. Um, that is not unusual, really. That is a logical, sensible thing to do. But the ability to actually engage and be successful at it, I think, is very important. It speaks to the quality of the management team they have there, right? So um, the cut operating expenses by 4.5% in the first three months of 2020. That is when the pandemic hit, right? No? right? Mm -hmm. um, okay. Now, of course, they own about 30 plus percent of Sajikor. Sajikor was a big impact on them. Mm. Uh, the BOG had implemented a, a, a policy. Mm -hmm. you know? It was a persuasive policy, I believe, um, asking financial, because of the whole expected impact of COVID, they ask financial companies, bank, bank um, financial holding companies, and direct financial institutions to hold back on the paying of dividends. You know, uh, asking them to retain cash to kind of show up the company, the, the respective companies, and uh, so they won't run into liquidity issues, right? And mm -hmm. Sajikor is a financial holding company. Okay? It has Sajikor Bank, uh, it has the insurance, it is insurance. So they did pull back on the payment of dividend, which which would have impacted uh, Panjam. Panjam each year gets probably about 1.2, 1.3 billion dollars in raw cash dividend from Sajikor each year, you see? So that would have impacted them. Plus the valuation of Sajikor. Sajikor has, holds X-Fund. X-Fund uh, made a big move in Playa International when they exchanged yes. shares in Playa. Playa is strictly hospitality industry. It was hit. It was really struggling before and was hit big time. The pandemic, the man, tourism. Right. Mm -hmm. exactly. so, so that was a big hit and Sajikor and X-Fund and Sajikor, that holds some directly also, is, and also the majority through X Fund, um, and the, it's the, the dispose of that player shares uh, in a depressed market, you know. So that in, affected the valuation of Sajikor, which him fed into Panjam. So we see a recovery now. Um, now that Sajikor has gotten rid of that, we see the price has adjusted to, re to reflect that. We have seen Sajikor's stock price. Uh, move up over the last few weeks. It's trading at a probably about fifty-two, fifty-three dollars now, and of course that would reflect in Panjam Financials' uh, first quarter as at what March. Mm -hmm. So Panjam has done well, but Panjam stated some uh, they had some strategic objective pre-pandemic. Um, I think I expect them to embark on them again. Uh, especially given that they have a solid, strong capital base uh, to, 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 to reinvest on, you know, it has sustained them through the pandemic, you know, and um, I expect them to begin to grow out again. Of course, they spoke last year pre-pandemic about raising additional capital, APO, additional public offer. Uh, as to whether they'll come to the market soon or later, we can throw that up into the air, but um, I believe they have a solid plan to continue to grow the company, and they are fairly diversified entities, right? Okay. Mm -hmm. So, and the whole, as I said, the whole various minority operations in a number of diverse private entities, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. venture tourism, business process, outsourcing, hospitality, consumer products. And of course, micro lending and office rental sector. Office rental sector is something that they have further developed over the last two years or so. Yeah, it's yeah. Really a solid, strong company. Okay. Well, and we oh. said that they appointed um, Joanna Banks as the new CEO. 
Mm-hmm. Of Anjam Investment, yes. So Mr. Okay. Stacey has stepped aside. He retains executive chairmanship position. Right, right. right. Yes. Um, it's a well-managed, well-led company. Awesome, awesome. I concur. Sounds good. Sounds good. So, Clive, so we've done the five, it sounds like, that we initially yep. promised. So yep. we started out with Derrimon Trading. Mm-hmm. That was the first one. Honeybun. Then, Honeybun. then we moved on to Honeybun. Mm-hmm. Then we and said, Cygnus. what, Cygnus, right? Yes. Cygnus is the, was the third one. The fourth one was Guardian. Yes. Yes, Guardian. And the fifth one, fifth stock to watch was yes. Panjam. That would right, just yes. wrap and up. And they're in no particular order. Right. Very important. No there are several order. others. Yes. Here's this thing, what I want to say. Yeah. The market is still in a recovery phase. From yes. Meaning prices. So prices are still fairly low. Right? Mm-hmm. So you can't go into the market in a diverse, you have a diversified approach. That is, you know, spread your risk. Right. Yeah. Uh, look at sectors. Um, <clears throat> you know, um, Look at companies that are fairly diversified. Uh, for example, you have conglomerates. By definition, conglomerates are diversified. For example, a Grace, which has probably about 30 various entities under mm-hmm. its holding. Uh, Panjam is one. You know, uh, you can look at Seprod. Um, you know, these companies are fairly diversified and they've done fairly well. So if one sector is not doing well, they can lean on the next, you know. Yes. Um, yeah. So you can look at those, but prices are fairly low now. So these recommendations are just what we believe are some of the better stocks. But there are yeah. quite a few out there that are trading uh, way below what they were trading at last year. We know that the pandemic could have impacted some. We know some of them are still in recovery, but we're building wealth here. So we're thinking long term. Right, you know, of course, right. there might be some short term, yeah, but we're thinking long term. And yeah. of course, seek, seek. I mean, this is not this is a discussion point. You'll seek further um, clarity, so more you know, measured approach from your investment rep. Absolutely, your licensed financial advisor. So, um, I wanted to check in with you though, Clara. Yes, Lasco Manufacturing. So, we'll go over that again. So, we said Derriman. We said Honeybun, yes. we said Cygnus, Guardian, Lasco Manufacturing, and we also said Pan Jam. So we really yes. gave you six, like, you six, know, we six. said and five. Not a few more, but, you know, we can so leave. So could, yeah. could you kind of give us a run on the few more real quick? I mean, we, we don't well, have very much time left, mm-hmm. but just out of curiosity, yes. certainly. Well, GK. Chris Kennedy, yeah. yeah. Grace we Kennedy mentioned that new. earlier. They had some GK fans here in the comments earlier oh. while we were logging back on. Yeah, yes. Just GK's, you know, what is interesting, the price earning is 40, not bad, way below the, the sector average in our um, spreadsheet here. Right? Uh, GK, the price has moved up considerably. And last week it was around $92 roughly, last Friday. Today traders has $99. You wow. See? And here's the thing. Here's the thing. Recovery from the pandemic, we're going to see some sudden movement in securities. Mm. I mean, that's how the market behaves, right? Especially as soon as the investing public sees, let's say, two or three quarters of positive report, then they are watching the first. They might say, hmm, let's watch and stay. Because guess what? Three months is just not enough to see if this company solidly recovered or on a recovery phase. Uh, second quarter, um, by third quarter, yes. And that's when they'll... The market will just move in. So um, Grace is already a solid company, has a strong balance sheet, strong cash flow. PNL continued to do well. It did very well during the pandemic and they indicated it's interesting how individual products, you know, I mean, this is a massive company, you know. But let me just have a little look at some of the, I have a little piece here and yeah. then let's see if I can find it. Yes, guys, Clive, looking at his, his little um, talking points there. Um, see some more people joining. Hey guys, hey Mel, thanks for joining. Late but still great, guys. We're just almost wrapping up, but thanks for joining. We would have listed some stocks so far, so we're highlighting GK now. Yes, Peter, thanks for summarizing who we've mentioned so far. Absolutely, thank you so much. Hey, Keisha. Donnell, live from New York. It's Jam and Beagle going live. It's not Saturday night, though. <laughs> right? Ah, wonderful. 
Yes, Jason said, God bless Don Webby and the GK team. Jason sounds like a GK investor, right? Yeah, <laughs> I love it. I'm a GK investor too, so hey, I ain't mad at you. That's very good stuff. Hey, Mel, good night. Yes, Clive, when you're ready, well, yeah, me no, no, yes, but here's the thing um, Grace has done very well. Uh, mm -hmm. Let me see if I can. Yeah, and you know, I wrote. But I have too many documents open here, sir. So, so. Hush, never mind. Yeah. You came well prepared with all your points. <laughs> right. <laughs> Grace, the, all segments did well. You know, their food distribution, manufacturing, food processors, uh, the insurance through GK. Key is improving, canopy insurance, money services did very well. Uh, they introduced this new, we we'll call it a product, which is really a process where. Um, inbound transfer money to bank they call it money to bank registration so you don't have, you don't have to go you look at remittance center for call it money anymore go straight to an account and that is a driver into their um banking services you know so it makes yeah. sense you know so all their sectors gk food usa gk food canada the new acquired entity probably about two two and a half years ago lafay brand in the u.s all of them did very well, you see. So I expect Grace to continue on this trajectory. And of course, I said that they'll continue to diversify their earnings and expand more within this uh, North American jurisdiction. So expect them to continue to grow. And even at a $99, the P is still fairly low. So there's really good growth in GK. All right. Love that. So we're adding GK to the list. Right. Hey, Orenthia. Love Orenthia's name. And, Beautiful. And, yeah. Yes. And, yeah, I think we had a, in the early part, we kind of, you know, we, we just spoke a little bit about our own company. We don't do it officially. We do not recommend our own We company. don't recommend JMB no, because we, we work here, right? Yeah, we work here. <laughs> you know, so we leave that to other companies. But the results came out today. So have a look at it. Um, you know, good, good, good. Rev, um, did very well. In fact, we did mm -hmm. well with the pandemic. We made some strategic move just before mm -hmm. the pandemic. And it really assisted in our performance right throughout. And it continues. Uh, now, the PE, I can just give you the metric and then you can speak to your advisor. Uh, mm -hmm. The price earning ratio is one of the lowest in the financial sector on the sector, main market. Yes, yes. Four, three, uh, really, really very good. You know, mm -hmm, um, mm -hmm. even though it's trading at 32, well, it traded as high as 36, probably mm -hmm. average today, 36, 35. Mm -hmm. uh, 50. Um, the book value is about 31.30. So it's okay. straight right near its book value. And then remember the average for this industry book value is about 2.6, cents, And where it is trading right there, $1 and 1.02 above its book value. So this is, you know, it's, it's a solid company. Absolutely. <laughs> um, Clive, any more? Because I guess my question is, and I see somebody asking about it here. Me not hear no NCB call or no Scotia oh, no. call. Right, I mean, right. the financial stocks are uh, usually yes, like, yeah, I mean, mm -hmm. what's going on? What's up with that? Yeah. Well, I can tell you, um, NCB is, is a solid company. Yeah. Uh, the P is a tad high because their profitability um, declined. Yeah. But NCB is resi resilient, you know, and mm -hmm. their investment, I, I'm looking at their broad strategic objective to drive the broad value of the company, you know. I mean, they grew over the last several years by acquisition, you know. So um, that, of course, is toned down now, so they're going to grow business internally, you know, yeah. as well as Guardian, a, a major powerhouse, should help them in doing that. Yes. NCB is, it, I would classify it as a hold. Okay. It, is a security to have in your portfolio. Mm. No, I mean the dividend period, the dividend yield is probably about 2.8%, which is good, very, very good in, mm -hmm. in the market. Right. So um it should be improved, it should be a little bit higher because the price, you know, fell off a little. Right? Yes, so yes. Look at I have some figures here on some of the How about Scotia. Mm -hmm. I mean, I score yeah. somebody mentioned Scotia earlier Scotia, in the comment. Yeah. Scotia. Yeah. Here's the thing with Scotia. Mm -hmm. Osha, NCB has been expanding through acquisitions over the last several years. Various acquisitions we can run right to them for the last three and a half, four years. You know, Scotia really has been doing the reverse. I've been consolidating, really going back to core banking and finance. You see, so we saw them disposing of their microfinance business. Uh, we saw, well, they were in advanced negotiation to um, offload 
their insurance business, which was one of the biggest earners, so show how serious they are really in getting back to core business. But here's mm -hmm. what happened. Over the last several years, they have also consolidated Scotia Investment, formerly db and g into the Scotia Group. You know, so mm. the balance sheet is, a, and of course, we know that they were going through some efficiency cost cutting measures over the last several years. Are people are worried as to whether, oh, will they remain in Jamaica? Of course, they will, they are, and they will. There's nowhere for them to go. But where the economy is, again, there's cha there are challenges, but there's no doubt that they expect the economy to grow while they're going back to core being banking, you know. Um, it is one of the leanest financial companies, one of the leanest company listed. Leanest mean take off the, the waste and the fat. Yeah, yeah man, they don't sheet. play. Yeah. yeah, in terms of the balance sheet. There's the balance sheet and the reserve is so strong, is that remember it was in 2019, going into early 2020, where they made some extra dividend payment. The dividend yield was exceptional in 2019. I don't have the figures here, but I benefited from that. And I, I can't forget that. Right. So, and it is trading quite cheaply right now. So, Scotia is a stock to buy. Well, here's the thing the PL, we know profitability has fallen. Whereas NCB was running up and doing quite well, Scotia has been. Um, profitability has contracted, you know, again, because it is shedding, is it offloading, you know, um, peripheral business, you see. Um, I expect them, though, to grow and to, you know, um, we see now where they're aggressively pushing their online uh, systems. Uh, I would say the ads on TV, we see where mortgage and their other financial services are pushing that, you know. So we expect them to continue to do well. And if you look at their financials, you can see in the various segments where um, you know, they have been able to to somewhat either soften the, the reduction or to in the improve in some areas. So Scotia is one of my top stocks. Yeah, awesome. So sounds good. There was another point about um somebody was asking, hey Glenn Roy, but it came up earlier in the chat about mail pack. Because again, when you're thinking about what's been happening in the pandemic and the kind of services and products that Jamaicans have had to rely on in, in the instances of closed borders or travel restrictions or just people not trying to move around a lot, you know, you're relying on courier services and services like mail pack that bring in those awesome items from overseas for those of us who love that kind of thing i, I you know guilty as charged mm -hmm. um what would you say to like you know like a mail pack um what what's your view on that yes mail pack is on it's a hold and okay. it's a hold now. Sure. the price that it is trading at um mail pack has done well it was recently listed early last year i believe or I think it was early last year, uh -huh. mm -hmm. just before, yeah. And it has done. I think it fell as high as five, six dollars, uh -huh. and then it retreated back to about. I think it for it, just recently it was trading at about two dollars, just under three dollars, and it has recovered somewhat to about three fifty eight as at last Friday. You know, uh, the PE is fair is about almost twenty times, which means that if you buy the stock now, the price of paying for it, um. At, at three fifty-eight, that three dollars fifty-eight cents you pay for that stock unit has generated a profit of eighteen cents. That's what the PE means. Mm. At twenty times, um, it is still below. Well, we have the we have it in a particular sector here called the service sector. Right. 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 And the, the PE is twenty times. The service sector PE is twenty-eight and a half times. So it is still below, but it is fairly pricey. You know, mm. uh, we know it's a company that has tremendous growth potential. When the PE is high, it doesn't mean that you can't buy, you know, right? Mm -hmm. What it means is that we expect it to market perform. So it won't do better than an average the other the securities in the market. That's what we mean when we say it will um market perform or hold, you know, mm -hmm. it will perform at least as well as the mark the the the, the, the broad index indices mm -hmm. or those in its sector. You mm -hmm. see. So mm -hmm. what it means is that it's simply reduce the allocation towards that particular security because it does have potential for growth. Uh, we know the parent company raised some capital the other day as to where this capital will be directed. You know, it's, you know, we can't, you know, I mean, maybe it's just not into Maypack, but I'm sure there'll be some synergy there because a group of companies and whatever happens within that group um, will impact Maypack also. Yeah. Maypack, yeah. Yeah, they have benefited from the pandemic and it shows in their returns you know um and the price went strong back up um 
But that space is fairly, I would, I, I would not yeah. say, it's competitive. But, yeah. Yeah, it is fairly competitive. Uh, but male pack, I think, has already distinguished themselves. They really need to just maintain and invest further, you know, in that. Um, yeah. Yeah, it's awesome. It's awesome. Good. I so, see a couple of folks here. Brands like Carib Cement came up earlier. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, where I was saying, boy, I don't know where people get the money from. They need to share some with me, but lots of construction and buying of property seems to be happening these days. <laughs> yes. Um, which some suggest couldn't positively impact brands like Carib Cement. Somebody mentioned Berger That's earlier. Awesome. Yeah. But yeah, I mean, what are your thoughts on those? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Cab Cement last quarter, though the figures here, but Cab Cement last quarter profit jumped significantly, probably about 24, 25%. Mm. Yeah, uh -huh. mm. yes. Um, Cab Cement is a hold. I put mm -hmm. it a hold right now. Why? The price is fairly high. The PE is about 22 times, you know. Um, it, it The price did flounder. It, it declined during the I would say a lot of part of last year, but since the last financial quarter, the financial came out, it had a huge upswing. So at this stage, it would have been an easy buy at around between 55 and 60, where it was trading at up to latter part of last year. At about $94 now, we consider that a hold. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And yeah. It, it doesn't pay a dividend, which we can understand why. It hasn't paid dividend in how many years? No. But at least capital gains is what you would rely on. So we'll consider that a hold. Right, right. And and it's it's I'm glad you're making that distinction, Clive, because not because a company is doing well, as you say, you know, profit profit increase over the last quarter, nice increase. They're in a sector that seems to be flourishing at the moment, which augurs well for their business. Right. Um, there are other factors to consider whether you want to buy into the company right now. Mm -hmm. As you said, depending on the price it's trading at, you know, how that impacts the PE ratio. And of course, again, what are your own investment objectives? You know, should you be holding right now or should you be buying or should you kind of just wait it out until, you know. So that's why having that conversation with the advisor is so important. It's not about, okay, well, Clive say, <laughs> you know, mm -hmm. we just kind of do what Clive say on a one hour and a half come in webinar from JMB. You know, we give the information and we put our, our thoughts out there. But again, it's really the onus is really on each investor to take ownership of their own portfolio and have the conversation with your licensed advisor. And if it is, you really don't want to dive into this stock thing on your own, and that's perfectly credible. You can invest in a unit trust, an equity based unit trust. Or you can invest in one of JMB's portfolios like the JMB Wealth Builder, where you can get exposure to stocks. It's just that the JMB investment <laughs> managers are the ones that are managing that. And you don't really have to worry about the ins and outs of which stock to buy, when, time to sell, time to buy. You know, you, you don't need to worry about that. So there, that's an option as well. Just to pause, you know, I think Carrie Ann had answered, asked a question earlier in the chat about um you know, sessions for people who want to learn about stocks. And just to say, guys, you know, we're so happy that so many more people are logging on to Goal Get Alive. We are now in our practically our third season. We started up again in March and we actually started out with a couple of sessions around stocks, how to invest in stocks, how to choose, how to pick stocks to invest in. So if you go to our YouTube channel, probably the easiest way to find it is to go to JMB Group Jamaica's YouTube channel and go on our video playlist and just scroll and you will see all those episodes break out the popcorn break out your notepad and your pen and you'll see those sessions that we would have done so what we're doing with clive you now is really probably the third in a series of episodes that we would have done on stocks starting with how to invest in stocks how to choose stocks and now clive is kind of just taking it home for us by highlighting who we believe are the star, what what are the stocks to watch that we believe at this time. And every quarter things change, you know, next quarter could be a totally different picture when we have this episode again. But we do have the information on our YouTube channel. So catch all of those prior episodes. And if you didn't catch this entire episode, 
it's being recorded. So once we we shut down here, it's going to be available on our YouTube channel um, and our Facebook page for you to watch the replay at your convenience. Remember to like this video. If you haven't liked it yet, you can subscribe to our YouTube channel or like our Facebook page, follow us, hit the notification button, especially on the YouTube channel. So you'll get that little ping, that little notification if you have the app on your phone. That says, hey, JMMB has gone live. Um, as we're wrapping up this season, we're going to take a little break over the summer. But Clivey, any other? I mean, there are some folks that came in talking about, somebody was asking about Proven. Mm -hmm. yeah. What are your thoughts on Proven and Carreras? Uh, yeah. You know, guess what? The horizon is important. Is yes. Um, so I'm going to give a recommendation to... Uh, on the weight, that's the term we use, to, that is to shed uh, the particular security. It doesn't mean sell it all off. It means just reduce the holding of it, realign. That's what it means, you know? Likewise, when we say buy, it doesn't mean they put all the resources into a particular security, you know? Realign. Um, you shed some, you increase more. But you have to look at dividends also. It's a, it's a holistic approach. Your capital appreciation, which usually we consider to be long-term, um, because it takes a while for a company to grow. Granted, the market pushed the price up before the company generated the result. It, you know, you, you move prices in anticipation of, right? But you want some cash flow. So the company's ability to generate profit, um, to pay you a dividend is based on its PL, profit and loss statement, and based on its cash flow statement, you see? And those takes a little while. So even though several companies know, um, they are doing a lot, yeah, in the space, in the economic space. We know proven is heavily now into real estate and they're pushing that and you see a lot of ads on it and thing. We know they've been acqu acquiring quite a few companies, you know, so it is considered a buy, you know, but you have to look at it with respect to your portfolio objective, you know, yes, not just yes. the singular stocks. I go as a good stock and I go out with enough things, you want to buy it, you know, you see? So are you inundated with financial stocks? You know, your portfolio have too many financial stocks are heavily mm. weighted. You want to reduce that. Because that's yeah. that risky exposure, you know. Yeah. So, again, even though proven it is into re uh, real estate investment REIT, it has a REIT, a mm -hmm. whole only subsidiary, but it's largely a financial entity. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes, it's mm -hmm. diversified across region, across currencies, you know, which is good. Yes, yes. A financial entity is not much different from several other companies that are listed that are fairly diversified across these. So the risk profile is probably about the same, you know? So, yes, and also, yes. yeah. So also now, our recommendation, especially when we give picks, well, recommendation is usually solid and long-term, you know? But sometimes the word picks, you know, come out something short-term. So yeah. I don't want you to run in and say, well, this thing I'm going to move up within the, by summer. In a, as a matter of fact, you know, let me tell you again, I said it earlier. Summer, this market moves in cycle, and summer is usually a lean, tight period. Lean, meaning that prices are usually subdued to declining, and volume is very low, you see? Mm -hmm. So expect the market to take a little sink during the summer. That is what usually happens. Mm -hmm. There will be exceptions, individual company exception. A company will, for some reason, sign some deal, engage into some new productive area, and it will reflect well, and prices can rise. That can happen. As well as because we are recovering from the pandemic period, you know, um, it could be that this summer might be exceptional. Last year, summer was no different. You know, it, the usual cycle of prices being depressed, volume low, that occurred. This summer, because we're at the tail end of the pandemic, if we get this 1.5 million vaccine, if people are taking it up, if business begins to open up, if schools start to open up, if summer coming and people want to carry them children out to holidays and things, then I might say an open up, and it could impact a company differently than how it normally, you know? So we could see individual companies doing well, but largely, remember, one, think portfolio in terms of portfolio allocation. Um, Think in terms of your cycle. Where are you? You know, are you cash? You want more cash than you? You'll postpone the, the capital gains, but right now you want some cash. So you probably wouldn't buy a company that doesn't pay dividend consistently in a dividend mm -hmm. low. You know, mm -hmm. as well as remember summer, the cycle of the market. Summer is expected to be a low volume, low price, um, declining market uh, period. So look into that you know, so you want to buy companies that will counter that cycle you know our, yes. our, again as i said think long term so think beyond the summer period 
Yes, yes. Well, Clive, we could be here all night because, make I tell you, I mean, you could have talked stuck still morning. It's it's such a rich topic. Uh, but, you know, we did commit to coming on and just sharing our top five. Um, we ended up with about six or seven. <laughs> so we gave a little broader. But certainly, you know, as you said, the stocks to watch right now, you know, first of all, I will have to big up Clive. Could we give Clive a virtual round of applause in the comments for being such a great trooper i mean clive you it's your first time on goal get alive and then your camera goes stress you out i mean give me a break you know what i'm saying i guess as i, I guess somebody somebody go zoom you because they didn't want you to slide in the dms according <laughs> they said the camera the camera never wanted the dms start to go on bad so they said no man we have to hide Clive's face and make, make the ladies just focus on his mind not on his face so um thank you so much for being such a trooper for bringing the awesome information we know you did have put a lot of work into preparing for this conversation tonight it's been fabulous and we need to have you back again because man so many questions so many any thoughts so just to remind everybody as we continue to celebrate clive is that you know we're going to be back next week tuesday 8 p.m jamaica time you know how we do it i don't tell you what topic we're going to be discussing next week because we want you to follow us on social media follow jmmb jamaica jmmb group jamaica we're on instagram we're on facebook we are on LinkedIn, we are on Twitter, and of course, we have our YouTube channel where we keep all of these recordings of all of these live sessions. Check out the prior sessions we would have done on Stocks maybe several weeks ago where we had some other awesome JMMB team members talking about how to invest in stocks, how to choose what stocks to invest in. We even had an episode on Unit Trust for those people who want to you know, look at the whole unit trust investing thing if, it, if, if, if that better suits you. At the end of the day, guys, of course, we continue to encourage you to consult your licensed financial advisor because this stocks thing is not just, okay, I'm just going to pick this, pick that. You need to have a conversation, look at the context, look at what's happening to any, any particular stock at any given point in time based on your objectives so that you are investing in the stock that's right for you and your goals and your situation. Very, very important guys it's not a quick quick fix thing i think odian may have said it you know we are investing we're not speculating so it requires that kind of thing um big up to all of our wonderful people in the comments <laughs> I mean, all the regular people and all the new people who joined in. Somebody said that we need to have David come on. David has been on Goal Get Alive already. Um, so, David, what you said, probably time to have you back. Let's have a chat and hear what's happening in your neck of the woods as far as your own personal investment observations. I mean, David is, is one of those people that we truly love and respect here at jmmb and always appreciate his participation. But, guys, we couldn't do what we do without you. Thanks for tuning in. Remember to like this video, subscribe to our YouTube channel, follow us on social media so you get all the updates and we see what we're going to be talking about next week. Of course, I have to big up my marketing team in the back, Jessica, our admin, who continues to stay very busy on a Tuesday night, and Stephanie and all the rest of the marketing team who make this happen every single week. Thank you so very much. And of course, everybody, we are still in COVID. COVID done, done. So we will encourage everybody to continue to stay safe, wash your hands, wear your mask, do what you got to do because we want to, you know, see the other side of COVID. So please um, continue to stay safe, follow the protocols and the guidelines from the Ministry of Health and Wellness so that we can press forward as a nation and really see another side of normal as, as best as we can, you know, in light of everything that's happening. So thanks, everybody. Stay safe. Thanks, Clive. All the best. Bye, everybody. Take yes, care. Thank you very much. Take care. Thanks for okay. having me. Thanks, Clive.